Hey everybody, so let's just give you an update on what's going on. So I filled out a lease application. Typically, I was trying to get into my broker mindset here. You're supposed to send out an offer, but this lease application actually, uh, you know, it's said in it, edit these terms to your liking. So I figured, okay, this, since this document appears to be open to negotiation, I'll fill out your lease application rather than finding some template for, you know, where I'm pretending I'm a broker sending in an offer. So it said three months deposit, even though he's discussed two months in person, which would have been a red flag if not for the fact that it said in the lease application, edit these terms to your liking. It said 3% increase every year, then a 5 or 6% increase in the fifth of the sixth year, and it's like, no, 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 I would, again, this is something I would consider trying to put the tip in if it didn't say editable. So with the other building, they had a non-standard it's kind of putting the tip in kind of thing with the you know th th last three months rent deposit rather than first three months, and they said it was standard. Here they had something that was non-standard that I'd never seen before, but they said literally said edit this to your liking. So no big deal. I filled it out. I also lowered the rent from 13k to 12.5 because again, why not? You know we're asking. Might as well ask. You don't get if you don't ask. So um, we spoke, and, uh, and he said everything looks great. I sent in all the financial disclosure that they wanted. They wanted quite a bit of financial disclosure, a little bit more than most spaces that I was looking for. And also, there was somebody that showed up in the store that started taking pictures. They had their camera kind of like over here trying to you know, kind of be sneaky as they're taking pictures of everything. And Hannah at the front goes, you know, how can I help you? And he goes, oh, you mind if I take pictures? You go, sure, what's your name? And he says what his name is. I did, she didn't know what was going on. But she just figured he was some fan of the YouTube channel or something, because sometimes people would show up really shy and be looking around like this, kind of, and, you know, kind of weirds her out. But so she's she's gotten used to it by now. But this was not a fan. It was a it was a broker, realtor, managing agent, whatever. They're all the same to me. You work in real estate. She came back to me and told me that and told me the guy's name, and I thought, damn, that's pretty good. The reason I think it's good is because that means that that is what the catch is. The only catch here is going to be that they are want to be very very picky about who gets the space. The catch is not that there's less space than advertised. The catch is not that you're hiding liquid damage from fl prior floods behind walls that you just constructed. The catch is not that building management are cunts. The, the, the catch is actually what you said. You want a really good quality tenant. You want to be very picky. So you're casting a very wide net and then only picking out the people that you want, which is exactly what I'm looking for. Because when it comes to concessions, what I'm willing to give up, I don't want to give up money. I don't want to give up the place being nice. I don't want to give up space. You know what I do want to give up? I'll give up being a good tenant. If being a good boy and behaving means that I get to pay $66 per square foot, I'll do it. By the way, did I tell you that I think that's the catch? So when I went over my measurements, it comes out it's about you know approximately 2250 square feet, 12500 after my offer. That The math comes out to $66 and 66.6666666667 cents per square foot. I'd actually mentioned a while back, jokingly, that I think it would be really cool to have a club of people that get coupons delivered to them for things that, you know, dumbass, superstitious people are afraid of. You know, the people that would not rent the 13th floor office, the people who would not get a phone number that's 10 sixes in a row, even if it came in. So, you know, maybe the 13th floor office space will be half price. There'll be a coupon. It'll go out to all the people in the non-superstitious club. Maybe the 6666666666 will come with, you know, a gigabit LTE for only $40 a month, unlimited. You, know, you, ne you never know. And it's really cool that I managed to actually find a store where the price per square foot is 66.6666666666. That is so cool. And if anything, if right to repair is going to get passed, then I'm going to be able to be, you know, beat the encryption on the T2 chip, get some SMC programming. I'm going to need the devil on my side for that, I think. So it's, 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 it's good to know that that, that he has, he's got me in mind with this new space that I'm renting. One thing that was a little strange when we spoke on the phone is he said, yeah, this place looks like a bit of a sweatshop. I don't think he's really earned the right to call this place that. You know, the people who work here, who've had to deal with 13 people in a little cramped area, you can call my place a sweatshop. You know, the people who helped me build it, <clears throat> they can call it a sweatshop. Me building it from scratch with, you know, the last of the money that I had at the time and doing my best to make something work for myself that allowed me to employ people and, uh, you know, pay people what I, something fair and be able to, you know, build something for myself and educate people. I get to call it a sweatshop. You, you little realtor, you don't get to call it a sweatshop. You haven't earned the fucking right to call my place a sweatshop. And this kind of reminded me of something that happened 
a few years ago in 2011 when I was looking for a new space for the first time and I was in two, I was at 251 West 30th Street in the basement renting John Grossbart's one of his rooms at Planet to Planet Studios I had the room at the ends of the hallway that was used to belong to MBK I believe it was Alicia Keys management company at the time it was very large spacious had a nice little lounge but you know it was an underground basement recording studio and looked like an underground basement recording studio and this woman for 38 West 8th Street shows up. It was for about a you know, 200 square foot store with a little mezzanine. You gotta, I'll, I'll walk, give you guys a tour by this place at some point. It's such a dump. But for me, at 4000 bucks, right by NYU on 8th Street, this was perfect. Like right, in the, you know, right by NYU School of Business, right by all the college dorms and everything. High traffic area. It was worth it for me at the time. And I said, you know, I'm happy to pay for it. If you wanted a two to three month deposit, 4000 a month, I didn't even negotiate, even though it was a shit deal. I said, here, I'll write you a check for sixteen dollars or $20,000 right now. And then she comes to look at the space, and she sounded just like that woman from 25th Hour, the one that, uh, you know, that Ed Norton's character was, was saying was that, uh, you know, the Upper East Side old wives with their face lifted and stretched. Fuck the Upper That's East Side it. wives with their air maze scarves and their $50 Balducci artichoke. Hey! Overfed faces getting pulled and lifted and stretched all taut and shiny. You're not fooling anybody, sweetheart. Taxi! She looked and sounded just like that person. And she just kept insulting the space that I was in. And it's such a nasty, shitty thing to do. Because I'm coming to you looking to spend what, to me, is a lot of money in order to move from a crappy space to a good space. I would not be visiting you, realtor or building owner, if my current space were good. The reason that you have a business, the reason that you make money, the reason that you're able to sell me a space is because my current space is inadequate. So pointing out that my current space is inadequate and laughing at me for it is kind of a shit thing to do. And she went in like 10 times worse than this guy. This guy just mentioned it in passing and kind of laughed about it. So no big deal. Not, you know, no skin off my back. But uh, this woman was just like going, you work in this. You work in this. Because there was, you know, there was no window. It was a studio with dim lighting and everything. He's like, you work in this. It's just like, fuck you. The entire reason that I'm looking to rent your space is because it is better than this space. And again, when it comes to these building owners acting like fucktards, it's a very good thing that she did because I was this close to renting a space that was about two to 300 square feet for $4,000. And I got this place, which was 650 square foot at the time for $3,500. It needed some work, but it, it was worth it. That place at 38 West 8th Street is still vacant. Eight years later. Great decision, lady. So I'm happy to get this process moving. They did ask for way more financial disclosure than just about any place thus far has asked. And if, again, if, if that's the only catch, I'm willing to pay it. I'm willing to pay the catch if you want a really good tenant. Am I willing to pay for, for less space? No. Am I willing to pay for a crappier space? No. Am I willing to make a concession in location? No. I'll make the concession of being a good boy, of being a good tenant, because that's a concession that doesn't cost me any money. A concession of the space being shittier, that costs me money. A concession of the space being smaller, that costs me money, because higher cost per square foot. The first one costs in construction. The space being out of the way, that's going to cost me and less customers. But the concession of being a good boy as a tenant, I'll take it. You know, they, they, it looks like the place used to be a print shop. They remodeled and renovated the place entirely at their building owner's cost for this print shop, which is strange because typically renovating to a client's specifications is something you do in office real estate, not in retail real estate. And at least in Manhattan, maybe Alan could comment on this. I've never heard of a landlord renovating a retail storefront to a specific tenant's requirements before renting it to them. That is unheard of to me. I've heard of it with office real estate because they're charging you out the ass for it, but not in retail real estate, specifically because with retail, with, with offices, there are certain specific configurations that work for a very wide variety of people. With retail, it's very specific. And the configuration one store wants or one restaurant wants or one bar wants is not going to be what most others want. So they typically just give you some months rent concession and say, build it on your own. But yeah, they built it out for this, for this print shop and the print shop went out of business and they have this really crappy non-standard configuration in the front where there's a wall right by the window and and there's a, a room right by the, the the front so you can't actually put stuff in the storefront and that's pretty awful because the whole point of having a store is when people walk by they can see in and that may be part of the reason that paul i and alan all miss this place again when it comes to missing this place i still think that it's worse that alan missed it than paul missing it or i missing it when we were going up the block because alan is a broker like his job 
his job that he would get paid five figures for if I found a space is to find me the best space. But to be clear, Paul walked by it and missed it. And Paul has a very excellent eye for attention to detail. I missed it while I was walking by. And while I don't have great attention to detail, I, sh you know, I should have seen this place because I was at 145 West 27th Street trying to rent it. That was the hello, welcome pantyhose store that all of you wanted me to get a, a clip of that from. I actually, I really want to get that store welcome thing to put in my store when they close. But that, that place was right next door. And I was looking to rent a space, and I was looking everywhere at places, and I was riding up and down every block. I walked right by this place, and I missed it. Part of the reason that I missed it is because of the layout. The way that they built the place to spec for that print shop was so bad that you don't even notice it's on the street when it's there, which is something that I would seek to change. But they, you know, it's clear that they were hurt by their previous tenants, and it seems like it traumatized them up a little bit, as it would me, because that's a lot of money to spend on a, on a tenant, on renovating a space, probably a broker, if they paid a broker to find the space, thirty to $40,000. So that's a lot for a building to spend, only for the tenant to vacate after a year or two because the business is not successful. And I... I you know, I, I hate to say it, but I'm kind of glad that that tenant did what they did because it showcases the value in a tenant like me who's going to be there for a long time. The space that I have now, I got a really good deal on it. It was about 67 or $68 a square foot when I first moved here when it was $3,500 for 650 square feet. It's went up considerably since then. It's closer to 96 to 99 bucks a square foot now, especially since my rent is due to go up again next month. This guy here, what he was looking for was a good tenant who was not going to, you know, he, that, that wasn't going to create a lot of controversy, that wasn't going to have a line out the door of drunk people, that wasn't some restaurant started on mommy and daddy's money that was going to go out of business in a year once they, you know, the, the money ran out and the, their lack of business sense finally caught up with their financials. It's something that's going to last. That's what he was looking for when he rented the store to me because he knew he was going to be selling the building and he wanted a good tenant in here to spruce up the front a little bit, which I did. And that's what they're looking for and that's exactly what I want I don't want somebody who's looking for a tenant who's too stupid to know cost per square foot I don't want somebody who's looking for a tenant who's willing to put up with shit management I don't want someone who's looking for a tenant who's stupid enough to put hundred fifty to two hundred thousand dollars into renovating their shithole that they're probably gonna demolish five or ten years from now I'm looking for somebody who wants a reliable good quality tenant who's not gonna bother them who's gonna make the space look nice who's not gonna ruin it who's not gonna have parties in it who is you know, willing to give the space away at a cheap price in order to get that. And that seems like exactly what we're getting here. So we'll see how it goes from here.